2022 virtually via WebEx. The purpose of this hearing is to hear public testimony by community members with respect to the citywide statement of needs for city facilities for fiscal year 2023 and 2024. The statement of needs is one of many tools that helps drive effective and equitable siting decisions for city agencies, including new facilities, the relocation, expansion, consolidation, or closure of existing facilities. The primary purpose of this document is to inform communities of the city's facilities needs and the specific criteria for selecting the locations of those facilities. Sorry, let me just fix my chat. Thanks. Um, members of the public who are viewing the meeting on YouTube and would like to comment on this issue can email info at cb14brooklyn.com and those emails will be included in the public record of this hearing. Please include your name, address, and organization if applicable with your testimony. Any testimony emails received after the conclusion of this hearing will be an addendum to the board's recommendations. Members of the board who are participating in this hearing via WebEx can use the raise hand icon or ask to speak in the comments on the WebEx screen. For pre-registered speakers and members of the public, please clearly state for the record your name, community affiliation, and organization if applicable prior to giving testimony. The time limit for all community speakers is three minutes. District Manager Sean Campbell will review our responses to the citywide statement of needs and follow I will follow that with pre-registered speakers from the public. Go ahead, Sean. Thank you, Chair Brown. And just for clarification, this is um, our citywide statement of needs was on facilities, and we did speak about that last um, last month. And we've moved on to the preliminary budget statement. Um, the preliminary budget was was released. Um, uh, about 30 days ago, and um, the responses to our budget requests, which we submitted to the city back in October, um, were contained in that. I've put a link in the chat, um, and it's been on our website for anybody who wants to look at the responses to each and every budget priority request that we submitted to the city. Um, and then I also put in a Fun report from the um, independent budget office that kind of just gives you background on how the city budgeting process works. Um, every year we have um, expressed some dissatisfaction with the, 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 the meaningfulness of agency responses to our budget requests. Um, and this year, and then about six years ago, the Department of City Planning had us change our process, which um, generated a whole lot more work for community boards. Um, but the promise was that DCP and OMB, uh, uh, City Planning and Office of Management and Budget, would use these new platforms that we had to submit on to um, gain better responses from the city agencies um, and to date that has not happened so one of our responses to the city on the budget process is our concern that we're still not getting enough meaningful response from city agencies um, and we're we are um, talking with omb and dcp to change that process if you look at our district statement of needs which is on our website in the About Us tab, um, it is required reading for the board members, and it's interesting reading for the you know for for um, all of our community members because it gives you some insight into a lot of stats about our district. Um, but you'll see on the cover page of that there's a seal that says published by Department of City Planning, which is annoying because you know we did all the work. Um, so we're kind of just struggling with the optics of that, but more importantly, with the responses from city agencies, and we did get a few pieces of good news, but our response, other than the process of this, is going to um, reiterate our advocacy for our own baseline budget increase, because we're the only city agency that hasn't significantly grown in the past 15 years, really. Um, and in our responsibilities have increased despite our resources not increasing um, a lot of community boards citywide are on board with that request. Um, we will also reiterate our, um, our push for the, uh, the 70th precinct. House, um, 
that is in a better place than it's ever been before since I've been district manager here, but not as good of a place as it was once before I was DM. Um, but the OMB, DCAS, and NYPD Capital um, have all cleared their hurdles to begin a site search. A letter went out to our local city council members urging them to help um, kick the necessary agencies in their, their respective pants to get the site search going. So we hope that that actually does move forward in some meaningful way. Um, the Department of Environmental Protection continued flood concerns, the Department of Parks and Recreation, the fact that we are still 59th in the city in terms of um, access to green space for our residents, not to mention some other sort of housekeeping stuff that the Department of Parks and Recreation does, such as tree pruning, has fallen behind a whole lot this past year because of contracting issues at DPR, and they're going to need to pay a lot of um, catch up. There's some interesting reports from um, um, the previous comptroller's office about every time you cut money from tree pruning, you end up paying a whole lot more out in claims from people whose property or persons um, have been hurt by falling limbs. So this is just a, you know, a penny wise pound foolish thing to cut. Um, what else do I wanna highlight? Um, Department of Transportation needs are high up because it takes DOT so long to address them and with DOT wanting to expand their reach into other aspects of city management and other uses of our public right of way, you know, it's a huge concern. It takes, um, you know, four years to get a speed hump. Um, and that is not reassuring um, in terms of giving DOT more, more responsibility and, and say over our, our public space. The Department of Sanitation is high up in here because you may have looked around and noticed that it's awfully littery out there and, uh, and manual litter patrol is an, a budget item that still has not been restored. And with 54 dead ends in our district, we need that service. Um, and then, and then the Department of Homeless Services and Human Resource Administration. Um, clearly, I think we can all look around and say there needs some to be some help there. And just to circle back to DOT, I put our advocacy for putting Newkirk Plaza under the guise of a city agency and one that would be rational. Um, so that kind of goes under the the DOT. Um, list to despite their that was one very clear answer in our budget response. A lot of them say things like needs more research and we're like, it doesn't need more research. We told you exactly where it is. Just fix it. But but um, the Department of Transportation just said no. <laughs> put do put Newkirk Plaza into the pedestrian plaza program. They're like DOT is not seeking to do that at this time. So at least it was clear. Um, and then there's just some responses to uh, um, Department of Education, uh, um, Brooklyn Public Library, Fire Department. These were sort of lower down on our list of priority in terms of what we asked for, but but where they didn't give us a meaningful response, we were asking them. For instance, the Fire Department, we asked for some um, firehouse upgrade projects, and they said this is partially funded. And so our response is some sort of more cleaned up version of cool. <laughs> but what? Um, so we'll try to get de more detailed answers, even from the agencies that had good news. We were like, but, but, but you need to explain what you are doing with funding on those projects. So that's where we are with all of that. One, one follow up. Um, we're going to do a follow up letter in addition to our response to the preliminary budget directly regarding Newkirk Plaza and directly to the mayor who as borough president was a huge champion of getting this, um, you know, getting this placed in, in an agency domain. Um, and then we already sent a letter about the 70th police precinct site search. So that's um, circulating with the, with the um, city council members. And then, as I said at the top, we're going to continue to work with DCP and OMB on a process that does glean more insight from the agencies, given what we put into the effort of putting our priorities together. I think that's all I have to say. Thank you, Sean. And again, um, sincere apologies. Clearly, daylight saving time has not been nice to me. Uh, this is the city preliminary budget statement um, for fiscal 2023 hearing. I apologize for that mistake in the beginning. Um, I want to recognize uh, representative of council member Rita Joseph, who's with us, Joelle Justeve. 
Um, moving the hearing forward, um, we have three pre-registered speakers from the public. Uh, the first will be Samira Noor. Uh, would you like to go ahead and speak? I believe you're muted. I apologize. You'll have to unmute yourself. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good. My name is Samira Noor, and uh, I work with Bathwa organization as a volunteer, and I'm working in the PS217 past 16, 17 years. And this is my first time I'm joining this uh, board meeting. And uh, I just like to hear about all of you, and I just wanted to listen what's going on around in our area and uh, I'm serving my community past 22 years and I'd like to continue and just I wanted to hear you today and uh, I will see if I have any question. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, the next community speaker will be uh, Pierre Albert. I'll circle back um, in case um, they join later. Um, the next <clears throat> pre-registered speaker is um, Glenn Bristow, who submitted testimony, which I will read into the record now. To all concerned, thank you for the opportunity to testify in full support of Brooklyn Community Board 14's budget requests for fiscal year 2023. At the outset, I'm compelled to remind everyone that the response implies not only a reaction Two, but the satisfy of a request. Also, community board members volunteer their energies in serving a district. Agency personnel are paid for their services. Um, two, uh, 21420-2301C is Mayor Adams satisfied with the police department's response to the executive directive, fund the police, which I believe is part of his campaign platform and the city's ongoing commitment to affordable housing. Has the mayor been apprised of the precinct's need? If so, when, if not, why? Was he made aware of this need while he was Brooklyn Borough President? If so, when, if not, why? Uh, 21420-2302C, please expand the phrase partially funded by providing specific details. Example, what percentage of the funding? Can the district expect full funding in the future? If so, when, if not, why? And why should CB14 have to seek specifics from the very agency it's querying? Why isn't that information part of the department's response? 21442023C, 21420231C, 21420309E. And what will the agency do to affect the study? Is there a timetable? 21420-2304C, 21420-2302E. Which 10-year period and for what plan to do the work needed to put the items on the agenda? Does the plan have to be reauthorized in some fashion with each new city council? 21420-2305C, 21420-2306C. The reason for the denial should have been included in the response. Why wasn't it? 21420-2307C, why isn't an annex to an existing location as opposed to an entire school location being considered? 21420-2308C, 21420-2310C, 21420-2322E. Why should CB14 have to seek information from the very agency it's querying? Why isn't the information part of the New York City TA's response? 21420230309C, which part? 21420232312C, why is DOE unable to prioritize this item? 21420213C, CD14's request indicates that NYPD is already involved. Has the board been made aware of the source of the resistance to the CCTV monitoring? 
214-202314C, when is the project scheduled to be completed? 214-202315C, 214-202320E, what has BLP done to date to obtain city funded financial support? 214-202301E, CD14 has obviously requested that the board's budget be increased to accommodate district needs. $257,507 is without context and therefore meaningless. So what is OMB doing to address this shortfall? 214202303E, 214202304E, 214202323E. What steps is the department taking to achieve certainty? 2202305E, uh, what is the city's legal responsibility concerning enforcement of its laws, rules, and regulations? Please provide data on the number of complaints, inspections, and corrections, resolutions, appeals for Brooklyn District 14 for the past three fiscal years. How many individuals were employees of the Department of Buildings? Is each borough allocated workers or do all employees serve all five districts? Do DOB workers multitask? Or for example, do inspectors only do inspections? Are all phone calls returned within a reasonable length of time? Are phone logs, logs maintained? Why aren't all certifications accompanied by photos instead of relying on verbal affirmations? 2142-02306E, 2142-02307E. Does the response mean that the agency has not been accommodating the issue within existing resources heretofore? Please provide the amount of existing resources, and if it hasn't already, when will the accommodation occur? 2142-02308E, will the department review and assess and assessment address the already faltering suicide hotline? And when does need outweigh available resources? And what does the department do when it does? When is this review and the assessment to occur? 2142023-10E, how much has funding increased and by what percentage? When is the increased funding take effect? 2142012E, 2142023316E, 2142023317E. Why is this dependent on the state and federal funds? And how is the city addressing this challenge? Which legislators stand in the way of increasing funding? On the personal note, why is that the elderly are always the one cast adrift on the economic ice flows? Is this because we're perceived to have little or no value to society? The city should step very carefully around us because we are the ones who vote. 2142023 13E, increased funding does not solve a problem if the problem is growing. What is the time lag between calling 311 and getting anyone to the scene? 2142023 14E, when does the NYPD expect the hiring gap to disappear? 2142202315 E, we have a big problem if HRA does not doesn't know the difference between a rent burdened individual and a homeless one. This request has not been answered. 2142023 18E. So does this mean that the pest infestation has remained a level or decreasing problem? Otherwise, how does the department plan on reducing the threat? Or should we wait for an outbreak of dengue before taking action? 2142023 21E, isn't the public entitled to know why this project is not recommended for funding? So why isn't it? 2142023 24E, 2142023 25E, last time I checked, additional corner baskets, weed whackers, bolt cutters, pruning shears, and similar tools all cost money. Please explain why these are not budget requests. Uh, this was respectfully submitted on the 14th day of March, 2022. That ends um, uh, pre-registered speakers and their testimony. Madam Chair, may I may I make a comment on um, Glenn's submission of testimony? Of course. First of all, um, thank you for that deep dive. For those of you who weren't as deep in the weeds, those those numbers were all the tracking numbers for all of the items. So that was a lot of work done by our, our resident, Glenn Bristow, um, and a lot of that was singing my song. 
to the extent that I can answer some of those questions and to the extent that some of them are more policy than budget questions, I'll circle back to you, Ms. Bristow, and, um, and try to do the clarification that we can do in our end, but really, really appreciate all of that hard work and the support behind it. So thank you for all of that. Uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, are there any questions from board members? Seeing none, do I have a recommendation from the board regarding the um, the city's preliminary budget statement and register of budget request for fiscal year 2023? And that would probably be a recommendation to approve. That that's a record that would be a rec. We're seeking a recommendation to re re approve our responses, which I outlined at the outset. So moved, Joe Dweck. Second, Gail Smith. And I'll just um, uh, ask the group, is there anyone who um, would like to uh, enter their recommendation to not approve the responses? Is there anyone here that should abstain from voting? And is anyone, oh. I have one abstention and is anyone in um, ineligible to vote on the recommendation? Okay, seeing none, uh, the recommendation um, <clears throat> will be to the full board to uh, approve the responses of um, the city's preliminary budget from city uh, CB 14. All right. Um, this concludes our public hearing at 6.52 p.m. Again, sorry for the misstatement in the beginning. Uh, we'll start our general board meeting at 7 p.m. sharp. Um, I'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks, everyone.
Sean, that was a deep sigh. It's been a long day, I see. <laughs> Hi, Tanya. I'm just am, gearing yes. back up, Florencia. Ready, ready for action. Okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> hey, do. Hi, Joanne and everyone. Good evening. Hi, everybody. Joe Dweck here. When are we going to do this in person? When's Hi, everybody. Except Joe, I'll talk please. about that later. Hey, Michelle. In private? <laughs> Joe, okay. no. Oh, good. No, absolutely Hi, not. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Hey, Nina. I Hello, literally, everyone. I literally fell in the door from physical therapy in time to uh, log in. I go. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Gail. Gail, my baby. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi good evening. Good evening. This is Anastasia from CAU Mayor's office. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Sean. How are you? Fine, thanks. Good to hear your voice. Likewise. And I heard Nancy Lulu. Thank you for joining us. And Anastasia, I know that um, from the mayor's office, I know you might have to jump off early. So thanks for making time and squeezing this in. And um, and if you miss anything after you go, I'll fill you in. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. Of course. How are you doing, Mr. Burke? It's nice to see you. It's nice to be seen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, before Yehuda Eckstein yells at me that it's seven o'clock, I will start the meeting. All right. Um, recording. All right. Let's see if I can get this one right. Um, this meeting of Brooklyn, Board, uh, Brooklyn Community Board 14 is called to order on Monday, March 4th, 2022 at 7 p.m. under the applicable, applicable statutes of New York State the Charter of New York City, the board's bylaws, and Robert's Rules of Order. The board's policy is to encourage detailed public discussion of matters before the board at our committee meetings and at public hearings. Consequently, except by board members, there will be no public discussion at a regular monthly meeting of matters about which a public hearing or a committee meeting has been held. Specific service delivery requests or complaints should be brought to the attention of the district office staff by calling the board office during regular business hours or by visiting our website anytime. Other matters 
of civic interest may be brought before the board during your scheduled public comment period, which will begin tonight after all other business on the board's monthly meeting agenda has been concluded. No partisan political appeals or advertising of for-profit enterprises will be heard. Persons, persons wishing to speak during the public comment period were asked to pre-register. Um, tonight's attendance, since we will be having an election tonight, will be by roll call. Uh, roll call will be done by um, third vice chair, Joe Dweck. Thank you. No? Yep. Got it. Uh, Wakil Ahmed. Greg Alvarez. Gregory. Yes. Good, gotcha. Carmen Serial Bell. Cindy Bendel, Alvin Burke. Gotcha. Darlene Bowers. Here. Joanne Brown. Shell Brunson. Here. Edward Sen. Present. Carl Henry Caesar. Present. Florencia Chang Ajeda. President. Leanne Chow. President. Yvette Claire Jean. <coughs> Cohen. Here. Joe Dweck here. You do the X team. You do the X team is in the car. Uh, all right. Never mind, Yehuda. Close enough. Ray Edwards. Leone Francis Bryan. <laughs> I didn't hear. And Godet? Here. Gotcha, Ann. Morda uh, Husarski? Present. Tashif Hussein? I didn't hear. Mansoor Hussein? I didn't hear. Dwayne Joseph? Here. Gotcha. Shahid Khan? Shahid, you're someplace. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Zakaria Khan. Nicole Levinson Angula. Angulo, excuse me. Okay. Naomi Lipnick. Here. Gotcha. Donald Loggins. Here. Gotcha, Donald. Melissa Minich. Ephraim Nirenberg. Here. Boris Noble? Here. Svi Plotsker? Um, Ed Powell? Martin Prasant? Here. Mohammed Razvi? Mohammed, where are you? I, hear, I see you electronically. Maria Rivon Hazelwood. Maria. Also, she's there electronically. Baza Ruhi. Nina Subgear. Here. Felicia Sanville. Sainville. Here. Michael Cedillo. Joel Siegel, Gail L. Smith, gotcha. Present. Abraham Treff. Abe. Here. Deborah Valentin. Yeah. Dawn Marie Walker. I'm here. Glenn Wallen. Here. Gotcha. We have a um, forum. Uh, Thanks, Mr. Chairwoman. Thank you. Mo Rosby's here too. Sorry. Mo Rosby, gotcha. We have everybody except you at Eckstein who's driving. <sighs> All right. Thank you very much. Um, let me just take a minute to go through and uh, recognize our uh, the representatives of elected sure. officials. Well, one thing which and, is on. Can oh, I please well, have everyone mute themselves? If you're on the phone, star six to meet yourself. Thanks. Um, 
uh, Anastasia Yaskova from the mayor's office is here with us tonight. Um, let's see who else do we have? Joelle uh, DeSauve from uh, uh, council member Rita Joseph's office. Um, yes, got that right. Um, let's see who else we have. Nancy Lulu from uh, uh, attorney, uh, district attorney uh, Eric Gonzalez's office. Welcome. Um, thank you to uh, Detective Scott Nuzzi and P.O. Joseph uh, from Community Fair 70th Precinct. Uh, Pincus Hyken from uh, Comptroller Lander's office. Welcome. Sabrina DeJuice from um, Council Member Farrah Lewis's office. Welcome. And that's everyone uh, here tonight. Um, moving forward to the minutes, um, were there any corrections to the minutes submitted to the uh, board office? Okay. Uh, are there any corrections from the floor? Hello? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, I'm gonna. Like, I'm getting into a community board meeting, and I'll call you. Okay. I'll be back. <clears throat> um. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion, motion to, to approve. motion to approve. Second the motion. You do the X thing. Thank you. Um. I'll go in reverse order. Anyone uh, wish to not approve the minutes? Anyone wishing to abstain from voting to approve the minutes? And is anyone ineligible to vote? The minutes are unanimously approved. Thank you. Um, I uh, want to acknowledge that council member Rita Joseph is on the call. Um, council member, did you want to address this group? Oh, just wanted to say a quick hello to everyone. How are you? Hope you guys are well, I'm here. Um, our office is here full. Working, we haven't moved into office, we're still working mobile. Um, mobile. So our office will be ready sometime next week, but our phone numbers are working and we're here available. Please reach out to our office. My staff is here, Joelle. If you have any questions, comment, or need any assistance, we're here. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here and welcome. Um, moving on, uh, district manager's report, district manager, Sean Campbell. Hi, thanks, Mia again. Um, and and Councilmember Joseph, I want to thank you um, for for being involved and proactive, and your staff for their responsiveness. Um, we're we're getting things done, um, so thank you very much. And and thanks again to Joelle. Um, I'm going to be brief, actually. I just I do want to sort of address. Joe brought up the question as to when we will be meeting in person, and that still is really um, um, kind of unknown. But what we're doing is once we get the the following month's calendar out, for instance, the April calendar should be out by the end of this week. Those meetings will be locked into remote meetings because that's how we are functioning now. And to pivot mid month just seems. Just seems undoable. We are sort of stuck in this place between once the meetings become. In person meetings, we don't know if that will mean. All board members are required to be in attendance in order for their participation to count toward quorum, or if there's going to be a hybrid model. The hybrid model is better theoretically, but has practical implications for our, our technology abilities, um, both in terms of equipment and, um, and know-how, and our space requirements. So um, it's my understanding that there's going to be uh, at least an expansion of hybrid, possibly an expansion of remote um, through this meeting season, but we don't know. And there, there, there are rumors that there's going to be an announcement tonight coming from the state. So obviously we'll keep you all posted. We're prepared to have our board meetings probably at East Midwood Jewish Center, which has the huge ballroom where we would allow to be, our, we, we could space out, which would still be comfortable for many people, um, but then we would hire some technical assistance and so there's a cost to that and the ability to do that for our board meetings and all of our committee meetings and the public hearings that's where it becomes prohibitive so working on it just working on the pivot and and um we will keep you all posted also seeking technical support and and um people power support through the um, borough president's office we've had several conversations as a team of district managers so our, our needs and our concerns and the fact that different Community boards need different 
sets of assistant um, has all been heard. Um, then in terms of, oh, speaking of gatherings, but I also just wanted to remind people, it's getting warmer. Everybody's thinking about their outdoor events and we're all looking forward to those, our block parties, our street fairs and all of that. Um, this leads me to a quick shout out to Detective Nuzzi. We work together to, um, to approve the street activity permits and we put thought into it and make sure that everything's going to go smoothly for the event and for um, the, the surrounding community. So make sure you're getting your take a look at the CECM website. I'll even put it in the chat when I'm done talking and just know how much lead time you need to plan your super fun, really wonderful block parties that we're all looking forward to because we don't want to say no because you didn't think about it in time. Um, and we're working on food pantry permits also with the support of Rita Joseph office. We're hopefully going to get that rationalized soon, um, but plan your parties, plan them well. Thank you. Thank you, District Manager Sean Campbell. <clears throat> <clears throat> Moving on to the chair's report. Good evening, board members. Um, happy Women's History Month and happy Purim to all who will celebrate. In sad news, I'd like to express uh, my deepest condolences on behalf of this board to board member Karma Carmen Sirio Bell in the passing of her husband, Cyprian Bell. We are so very sorry for your loss. May um, memories of him comfort you during this time going forward. You are in our thoughts. Um, I'd like to take a few minutes to celebrate Chair Emeritus Alvin Burke and his decade long service as community board member and his profound work as chair of this board. As you have read in his letter, Alvin is hanging up his cleats and will not be seeking reappointment. I want to share uh, my fondest interaction with him. It was 2017 at the annual CB14 meeting. I was newly appointed to the board, knew no one in the room, and so I sat on a metal folding chair along the north wall of the conference room in total wallflower mode. Alvin sat down next to me, uh, asked me all about myself, listened to me gripe about the long lines of the election polls, and how being on a condo board was a lot. Um, his attention and deft ear made me feel welcome and solidified that I was part of this new community. I am immensely grateful for those 20 minutes. Uh, Chair Emeritus Burke will continue to attend meetings and has offered to continue uh, to be a continued source, source of institutional knowledge. We thank you. Um, so if everyone would join me, please unmute yourself and let's give him a round of applause worthy to send a man of, of this stature into retirement. Oh, protest. Under protest. Uh, are, are we allowed to just say a few words, Madam Chair? Of course, go ahead. Can you hear me, Madam Chair? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Thank you, Gail. And I will be brief, but Alvin, it's been a heck of a ride. We've been together. It's been exciting, rewarding, productive. Uh, I, there's just so many things that I could say about you and uh, being the, the head of CB14. And I will never forget. It. So Sean, this is even before Sean, this is back in the in the in the days where after the community board meetings quite a few of us would go and 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 net um how could i say it fellowship together at the restaurant on avenue m you remember that alvin i do As, yeah so just thank you so much for everything you have done and for being in my life it's just been wonderful and I wish you much, much joy and happiness in the rest of your years. I love you, gonna miss you, my brother. I'm um, done. Uh, Chair Meredith Burke, did you wanna say a word or two? I'm very, I'm very happy that you're in the chair's position, Joanne, and that you and Sean appreciate the importance of partnership. And 
I feel the board is in good hands to continue its tradition of cooperation, independent cooperation with the elected officials. And, and I'm very grateful to the board members for, I, I truly meant what I said in my letter. And I feel proud to have been a member of a team. And it's evident to me that the board is going to continue as a team. I just don't want to get in the way. And I'm feeling that I'm not up to speed. And I don't want to hold you back. You're doing wonderfully. And I expect you to do even better. And I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss the board. One, one, of the, one observation. It's easier to be chairman than it is to be a board member. Board members have to take positions on things. You guys have to stick your necks out. As chair, I always could take advantage of my chair's position to hang back and find out which way the wind was blowing. You're great. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Um, I'll just, I'll take two more. Uh, Glenn Wall, and you're having, you have your hand up. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd like to um, thank Alvin as well, um, not just for being uh, an incredibly uh, good chair for many years uh, that I was fortunate to, to see and be part of, but also for the CERT. Uh, not all of you know that the CERT is a community emergency response team. It's a group of volunteers who are prepared to help in a disaster. Our CERT, Brooklyn South CERT, is the best equipped and best prepared uh, team in New York City uh, that has anything to do with uh, NYSEM, New York City Emergency Management. And that is thanks to Alvin Burke, who mentored me when I was early on in the days of just trying to figure out how to deal with volunteers. And uh, I, I owe you a great deal of gratitude, uh, Alvin. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Um, Joe, if you could be brief, because I, I actually want to hear from um, Ms. Hazelwood, too. Uh, thank you, Joanne. I just wanted to echo what uh, um, others have said, Gail was in particular. And he, Alvin, has put us on a path for the last 30 years of professionalism and, uh, and, and community and, and, and just respect for each other that has been wonderful and uh, will continue, God willing, always in the future. Thank you, Alvin. God bless you. Absolutely. Respect has been paramount uh, and a paramount lesson. Um, and last comments will be from Maria Van Hazelwood. Good evening, everyone. First, I want to apologize. My audio was giving me problem and I couldn't say present. I'm all the way up in Connecticut. Alvin, I just want to say thank you for the trust you had in me when I first got into the board. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Chair Brown, may I have the last word? Of course. The last word is you have a great district manager. Cherish her. She'll, she'll be there for you. You're here. Here, here, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to quiet down now and listen to the board meeting. Okay, thank you, everyone. All right, moving on. Um, uh, recommendation from the public hearing that preceded this meeting, um, which was the city's preliminary budget statement and register of budget requests for year 2023. The recommendation from the board was to uh, approve the responses to the city pre preliminary budget. Um, I would uh, ask <clears throat> for a motion to um, approve those responses. I'm all in motion to approve. Second the motion. You could ask. Thank you. Um, in reverse order again, um, anyone uh, uh, feel that they do not want to approve the city, the responses to the city's preliminary budget statement? Um, is anyone abstaining from um, this vote of the recommendation? I have one abstention. 
Uh, anyone ineligible to vote? Seeing none, uh, the recommendation of, um, passes uh, to approve the responses to the citywide preliminary budget statement and register of budget requests for year 2023. Thanks. Um, moving on to the election of officers. Since the slate of nominees for board offices is uncontested, um, third vice chair uh, Joe Dweck will proceed to cast a single vote to elect the slate. Uh, Mr. Dweck, would you please read the slate for the record and cast the vote? Uh, actually, I don't have the slate. I never got I'll read the it slate. for you. Thank you. Okay, I got it. Uh, uh, Joanne Brown, chair. Gail L. Smith, first vice chair. Stephen D. Cohen, second vice chair. Joseph, Joseph Dweck, third vice chair. Hindi Bendel, secretary. Shahid Khan, member at large. Carl Henry Cesar, member at large. On behalf of the entire board, I cast the vote for this unopposed uh, uh, ballot. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and thank you to the board for entrusting um, this uh, executive committee once again for the, for the upcoming year. Um, moving on to the borough board report, um, community board applications closed on March 4th. At the behest of community board officers, the office of the borough president has created a portal where chairs and district managers can review new and renewal community board applications. I have not visited the portal, so I cannot say when information is available. Um, I personally have trepidations about this initiative um, and it will perhaps feed public weariness towards community boards, which already have a declining public opinion. Um, so I'll continue to be transparent about our interactions with the portal and I'll let you know um, what we find there. Um, we received announcements from Tony Toledo with the New York Civic, New York City Civic Engagement Commission, including the first in a series of workshops that will enable community board leaders to strengthen their ability to engage with the public in a more inclusive, equitable, and innovative manner. For Brooklyn community boards, this will take place on April 4th. Uh, you can find the link to the flyer on our website under upcoming community events. Also announced was the merger between uh, CEC and Democracy Now! New York City. Um, and lastly, new to the borough president's agenda were reports um, to the board by community board chairs. I discussed some of the key events from the last few months and announced the upcoming nonprofit roundtable and the annual youth conference. Um, moving on, regarding open restaurants. On February 24th, New York City Council voted 43 to 6 against zoning changes to allow um, uh, future outdoor dining in communities that have long been excluded from having sidewalk cafes. The changes are the first step in the city's effort to create a permanent outdoor dining program. Prior to the lengthy City Council hearing, um, I sent a letter to our City Council members reiterating the board's position and concerns surrounding the Department of Transportation as the administrating agency. We thank our council members for their attention and thoughtful comments throughout the hearing. Um, moving on to the Community Board 14 Flatbush African Burial Ground Task Force. Uh, the following board members have volunteered to join the task force. Um, Joanne Brown, Ed Sen, Florencia Changageda, Dwayne Joseph, Talisha Sainville, Gail L. Smith, and Glenn Wollen. Thank you to those board members for volunteering. Uh, our practice has been to appoint public members to a committee or task force after they have attended a committee's meeting. We look forward to, we look forward to seeing uh, you at the first meeting. To reiterate, the purpose of the task force is to facilitate city agency and community input to promote district-wide public participation and feedback in the future of these sacred grounds and to network with academia and cultural organizations who are knowledgeable in history and preservation of such sites. A meeting of the task force uh, will be announced with the April calendar. Um, most likely it will be on April uh, 20th. Uh, to be confirmed by the calendar. Um, and here is where the co-chairs will be selected by the task force. Um, also a reminder that community and board members who are not named to the task force are always welcome to attend and participate in the meetings. 
And that concludes the chair report. Moving on to topical committees. Um, the first report will be from Youth Services, Education, and Libraries. Chairwoman Brown, thank you very much. Folks, good evening. And Alvin, uh, yep, thank you very much. You're amazing, and I wish you the best, my guy. <laughs> and so to kick off the um, committee report, <clears throat> so unfortunately, my co-chair, um, Nikki Levinson Angulo, she wasn't able to attend, but you know, she's definitely a part of the tandem. And so there's a few things. So the first thing is just that um, in terms of libraries, <clears throat> the Brooklyn Public Library said that starting today, March 14th, although they encourage everyone to wear a mask inside of their locations, they're no longer mandating that the masks um, are worn inside. So that's the first update in regards to libraries, the Brooklyn Public Libraries and the updated guidance in regards to COVID. On the other front, the second thing is that we met as a committee on March 7th, <clears throat> and that was the first time that the new group met as the Youth Services Education Library Committee after the bylaws had been approved. And one of the changes in the bylaws was the new structure of some of these committees. And so the main focus of our Monday, March 7th meeting was planning for our youth conference. So we talked about several things, um, very high level. The first thing I wanna mention is location. And so as usual, thanks to the wonderful work of Sean and Anya, we are considering um, the LaFrac Center, which is otherwise known as the ice skating rink in Prospect Park as a venue. And so CB14 has been in conversations with LaFrac and one of the things that they're trying to figure out is a potential um, site visit schedule that would work to check it out. The other thing as well is that in terms of timing, right now we're looking at this taking place either the last week of April or sometime in the last two weeks of May. And so the reason you have such a, I guess a wide range is just that um, the first weekend in May, I will be out. And then for the first maybe week to week and a half of May, um, Nikki will be out as well due to work. And so that's why you see the potential timing options being either the last week of April or the last two weeks of May. The third thing that was discussed a little bit is <clears throat> how does this tie into the SYEP application? Because one of the things in the past was that the youth conference was a way to drum up interest and also funnel people into the application process who may not have known about it before. And so right now, the SYEP application deadline is scheduled for April 22nd. And so given that timeline, if that deadline were not extended, then there's a chance that this um, conference would basically be happening after that. But during the conversation that we had on March 7th, we felt like that wouldn't be a problem, um, basically, if the conference did take place after the SYP application closed. And the other thing that we discussed as well, too, was the digital backup. And essentially what we came to as a group was, <clears throat> even though we feel very good about the current status of COVID cases and the rates of infection and hospitalizations, um, if something did happen COVID related that forced us to reconsider, then we would not hold the digital version. We would cancel um, the youth conference outright. And one of the main reasons we came to that decision during our meeting on March 7th was just because for those of us who did help with the youth conference last year, um, there was definitely a noticeable absence of participation and engagement, right? So there were people signed in, but the engagement and the participation was low. And so that's why we as a group came to the consensus that if unfortunately COVID does strike and we are in a position where we have to make a judgment call, we would rather outright cancel the youth services conference than to hold the digital version. And so the last piece that we discussed as well is we could definitely use help in terms of making sure that this one runs, you know, as well as the prior ones. And, you know, to some extent better because that's we are as a committee board, right? We always like to do great work and improve upon it. And so we are looking for specific volunteers in a certain areas. And so these areas are creating new promo materials, 
physically distributing flyers, uh, distributing flyers, excuse me for that, um, taking photos on the day that we actually have the youth services conference, and then also being present um, day of to help with various things. And so to anyone who is interested in contributing in one of those four areas that I mentioned, then please email um, the CB14 office, let us know which particular area you see yourself helping in. And then, you know, Nikki and I and the CB14 office will definitely loop you in. And so that is the update from the Youth Services Education Library Committee. Thank you very much for that report. Um, I wanted to recognize a representative of council member Ida Vernikoff's office uh, uh, Tova Shostakov is here. Um, I also want to recognize that Eileen uh, Mulaney Newman is here from the Borough President's Office. Um, next topical committee report will be from transportation, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the, um, I guess the only thing we wanted to mention is that uh, is just to get uh, our upcoming dates uh, in folks' calendars. So we're actually meeting uh, the first Wednesday of the month for each of the next two months. So that's April 6th and then May 4th. Uh, so we'll have uh, transportation committee meetings in back to back months. April 6th is slated to be with some transportation organizations and May 4th is slated to be with DOT about bus lanes in particular. So we're looking forward to that and uh, hopefully as many of you can join us as, as uh, your schedules permit. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Next report is from Human Services, please. Hello, I'm, I'm just, uh, oops, there we go, activating myself. Um, we had um, quite an in-depth presentation from a number of people on February 24th of 2022 um, from the health department. We had a presentation um, by um, Afia Frimpong, um, who gave us updates about COVID, which are already somewhat out of date uh, because it's a rapidly changing environment, as you know. So hold on to your seats. Um, at that point, she said that people who get vaccinated at um, New York City um, public sites were getting $100. Uh, I don't know if that's still true, but um, if you know anyone who's looking, um, I guess they can always check it out. Um, mask mandates as of now are no longer in place for schools, but they continue to be in place, although not very enforced um, for the MTA, public places, health facilities. Something that is very important to know is that antiviral pills are available for individuals age 12 and up at high risk for serious illness up to day five of their illness and the monoclonal antibodies um, are for individuals um, who um, are at risk for severe illness up to day 10 of the illness. Um, there are forms available for sick paid leave time uh, by calling uh, 212 COVID-19. And um, there are other forms available, including um, affirmation of isolation forms. And there's a lot of this is on the uh, YouTube and I believe is available uh, through uh, New York City Department of Health, COVID, you know, just Google those and you'll get the information. Um, <clears throat> we had a very in-depth presentation from Dr. Michael Algenbrown from uh, New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation and SUNY Downstate and slash Kings County Hospital um, he's chief of the Department for Infectious Disease, and he spoke quite in depth about the variants and um, how when a lot of people are not vaccinated and there's a lot of spread, there's more opportunity for, um, you know, for um, mutations to develop. And right now, the mutations that we are seeing have been Fortunately, less virulent, but that could change in the future. And um, all I can say is it was quite, quite in depth. So if you want to really hear about it, um, I would go and listen to the YouTube. We also heard from uh, Casey Burke, 
uh, from Breaking Ground, and he spoke about the day program and outreach um, to help get individuals into medical, social, and other services. They have a clean needle program. Um, they do on-street care. Uh, sometimes individuals won't come in, but they can give them medications and do other things really where they find them. Um, they try to have um, a response to calls uh, within an hour. Um, you know, so if you see an individual who seems to be having you know, problems, um, you know, whether they're sitting there freezing or, um, you know, asking for food or, or seem to be ill, uh, you can reach out to, um, to breaking ground and they will get an outreach worker there. Um, and their work is done primarily in Brooklyn and Queens, but also in Midtown Manhattan. And, um, they have centers for adults, families, women in need, and pregnant individuals. Thank you very much. Any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you so much for your report. Thank you. Uh, moving on to housing and land use uh, report, please. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm Talisha Sainville, and along with Greg Alvarez, we are the co-chairs of the new Housing and Land Use Committee. Um, our committee had our first committee meeting on March 3rd, where we had two speakers, uh, Charlisa Lanzot from the Office of Neighborhood Strategies at HPT and David Weissglass, who is the Associate Borough Planner at the New York City Department of City Planning. Um, and they each spoke about um, things within their, within their agencies uh, that the neighborhood can refer to and rely on uh, for further information. Going forward in our committee, we're planning to have more information sessions such as this one, and we also um, we also are planning on uh, we we've asked David Weissglass, especially in the Department of City Planning, to uh, let us know if there are ways for us to know about applications earlier on uh, within the process, amongst other things. So that's basically an update. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations to both you and Greg Alvarez on your first meeting. Um, we're so happy to have this, <clears throat> this new topical committee and, and the potential of, and what it means for this community board. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on, next topical committee report from community safety, please. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of my co-chair, Abe Truff, we wish you a great evening and congratulations to the newly elected, elected officers. Uh, due to the fact that uh, Deputy Inspector uh, Allison Exposito had to, has departed from the 7-0 police precinct and um, Captain Suarez is unavailable, our meeting, the agenda has changed. So we are still having community safety uh, meeting on the 24th of March at 6.30 p.m. However, we will be having Nancy Lulu from the Brooklyn DA's office. Thank you, Nancy. She is the of the Office of Public Engagement. So we looking we're looking forward to hearing from you, Nancy. We'll also be having Mr. Al Matthew from uh, Brownsville Think Tank Matters Inc. And so we'll be discussing uh, issues uh, relating to safety within our community. And I want to say our community have been relatively safe. Thank goodness. And thanks to our police officers, we did have, however, a shooting on Friday night. Uh, the sus uh, the person who got shot, uh, it wasn't life threatening, 
So we'll be doing a police response. It happened at uh, 2303 Avenue D. So if anyone wants to join us out there, you know, we'll be out there doing a shooting response. We need to keep our neighborhoods safe. So if you want to join us, you can reach out to Officer Joseph or myself. And uh, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Uh, next and last report will be from Community and Cultural Affairs and Economic Development, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of uh, Donald Loggins and myself, the co-chairs for the uh, new Community and Cultural Affairs and Economic Development Committee, just want to announce that we do have our first meeting scheduled for um, March 31st. At 6:30 p.m., uh, we have invited the three business improvement districts uh, to participate in the discussion to let the community know essentially where they are, what they do, and how they support the local businesses as well as engage with the community. Um, just as a sidebar to that, though, I want to say, um, as a former co-chair of the Youth Service Committee, um, I'm going to drop in the chat the link for businesses to sign up as work sites for SYEP um, because our young people are very eager. They're very motivated. Um, we have a big turnout for our youth conference every year, even last year when it was virtual, while not as big as it has been in the past, it was a very decent turnout for a virtual meeting. Um, and we need to provide our young people opportunities for jobs. So becoming a work site is an opportunity to provide employment for a young person in our community. So if you are a business owner or know a business owner, and I'm definitely gonna be bringing this up at the at the Economic Development Committee, um, you should consider participating. The city pays for these young folks to be employed for six weeks. So all you have to do is supervise them, encourage them, and you know help them build their future and give them some job skills. So I encourage you all to share that link widely and I hope to see you all on the 31st of March. Thank you very much. Um, that concludes the reports from topical committee. At this time, we'll move into the public session. Oh, um, this brings us to our public comment period. Board members are expected to remain for the public comment period. Because we were meeting remotely, all speakers were asked to pre-register via email to the board office. Any member of the public who is not able to register in time can follow up with the board and staff who will include appropriate announcements on the CB14 website. Matters of civic interest and announcements of public events are invited. No po partisan political appeals or advertising for profit enterprises are permitted. Service delivery requests should be brought to the attention of the staff by email or during regular business hours. Each speaker will be permitted up to three minutes and may not receive additional time from another speaker. The board has an obligation to conduct its business in an orderly manner. Any person preventing the meeting from continuing will be muted and possibly disconnected from the meeting. The intent of the public comment period is to permit the board and the community a chance to hear diverse perspectives on public issues. Accordingly, we ask that groups be represented by a single speaker. It is now 7.44. Anya Hoyer will be announcing our previously registered speakers at this time. Our first speaker is Tova Chatham from Council Member Verna Cox's office. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, and I appreciate letting me speak. I will be really quick. I just wanted to give some updates from the office of Council Member Verna Koff. First of all, um, the council member passed her first piece of legislation in the council just last week. She passed a resolution supporting the people of Ukraine in their fight for liberty as a Ukrainian American herself. She's been working very, very hard with the local community and her districts in, in her district to support the refugees and the folks who are still in the Ukraine as they are under attack. Um, including she collaborated with Hatsala to send a plane load of medical equipment and humanitarian aid. And uh, she collected supplies from community members as well to ship to the border for the refugees. Um, locally, she's also been working uh, on the issue of anti-Semitism. She hosted the JCRC and the UJA 
at an event where small shuls were able to apply for a security grant that would help them to um, better secure their synagogue and keep them safe. She's also hosted just last week a food distribution with the Muslim community and the organization ICNA Relief. Uh, she's been visiting all the local schools in the district to speak to the principals and the children. Now that it's budget season, she's been um, accepting uh, many capital budget requests from these schools. And so she's been visiting them to see what their needs are and to meet the kids and see what the priorities are for the community. Um, I also just want to remind everyone that the summer youth employment program applications are now open and um, please apply if you have a child or if you're a child uh, it's a great program and i just want to say thank you very much to sean campbell for her partnership uh, she's been a, a fantastic community partner with us and we've been in touch with her on on several issues local issues she's on top of her game so thank you sean and thank you to the chair and to everyone and i hope everyone who's celebrating has a great perm and a happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, Tova. Tova, um, oh, I'm sorry. Someone's screen, Mohammed Razvi, I believe your screen is sharing right now. Could you please unshare your screen? Or Sean, can you? I was trying not to share. Uh, okay. okay, I'm sorry. I thought that was coming from our speaker. Um, no. Okay, thank you. Oh. Our next speaker is Brianna Solon from Impact Brooklyn. Not sure if she's still on the line. Brianna? I'll circle back. Our next registered speaker, I believe, also jumped off Anastasia Yaskova from the mayor's office. She's with I us. Believe. I'm sorry? She, she's oh. back with us. Okay, she's back. She's back. Anastasia, go ahead. Um, okay. Anastasia, Yaskova, maybe you are having technical problems. I can come back around to you. Um, the next speaker registered I have is Dakendra Dazel from the Campaign Against Hunger. Please go ahead. Hi, good, good night, good evening, everyone. I um, hope everyone's having a great day. My name is Dakendra Dazel with the Campaign Against Hunger. And I just wanted to um, jump on to tell you all about um, some of the youth programming that we actually have. So we are a, uh, a organization uh, based in Brooklyn and Far Rockaway. And currently we have an opportunity youth program open for youth ages 16 to 24 who are currently unemployed um, and also out of school. Um, we're employing them for 14 weeks and they are able to receive $15 an hour for 10 hours per week. Um, if you or any organizations that you know of um, are able to, you know, help uh, connect with us and help us get some youth within this program, it'd be really great. Um, within the program, youth would be paired with different work sites um, within Brooklyn, and they'd have a chance to learn professional develop development skills and have a variety of workshops as well. I'll leave um, a link to the application in the chat. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to uh share that um information with you all okay thank you dekendra we'll also add it to our website thank you you know thank you very much someone uh, needs to mute thank you okay our next registered speaker is uh, Ellie Slavin from Yvette Clark's office. Slavin, are you on the line? Okay. The the person at eight oh two, the telephone number eight oh. There we go. That's better. Um, I don't know that um, Ellie was going to be able to join us tonight, but we did put a link to our website in the chat and there are some announcements from um representative yvette clark on our website for your um 
for your information. Great. Our next speaker is Natasha Philpot from the New York City Department of Education and Adult Education Unit. Go ahead, Natasha. Greetings, community board. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I am actually taking over for um, Julia Foster. Um, she is the community outreach liaison for all of Brooklyn. Um, I recently took over. Um, she has been in and out of the community boards. Um, this is actually my first one for this uh, specific board. Um, so thank you guys for having me. Um, I am all over Brooklyn and we promote uh, the DOE's free adult education classes. Um, the only requirements that we have is that you have to be 21 years of age or older. Um, that is pretty much it. Um, we offer various classes. Um, the most recent classes that we have to offer have been at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So we are offering um, the copper cabling class. Um, so that is basically um, a direct track to working with um, companies such as, uh, such as Spectrum and um, Optimum and Verizon. We are providing the training 100% free as well as um, connecting you to the jobs themselves. Um, all of them are at the Brooklyn Navy Yard on Saturdays. We also offer the new OSHA 30 class and now the additional 10 hour course for site safety training, um, which is also the, the one one stop track for um, construction trades. Um, we also now offer a food handlers class that is 100% free. Um, we do have some culinary components, so it is more tailored for um, the food service industry. Um, but all of these classes terminate in certifications. They are 100% free um, provided by the DOE. Um, so if anyone is interested in um, classes, I will leave my information in the chat. Um, this is open to anyone. Um, I do say most recently I have started taking my own classes um, because we offer Microsoft Office classes as well and my certification expired. So um, in order for me to get it outside, I had to pay about $200, but then they offered the class to me on Saturdays at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Um, so this is open to anyone who just may want to brush up on certifications um, and just retouch on those skills. Um, so again, 100% free, and I'll leave my information in the chat for anyone who may be interested. Thank you, guys. Very much. Our next speaker is Trudy Cullen uh, from the Jewish Board for Family and Child Services. Go ahead, Trudy. Okay. I'm not sure Trudy is on the line. Nancy Lulu from the Brooklyn DA's office. Go ahead, Nancy. Good evening. Thank you, Anya. Good evening, Community Board 14. Um, I bring greetings on behalf of DA Gonzalez to everyone. As always, the DA's office is committed to protecting our Brooklyn communities. Uh, DA Gonzalez firmly believes that public safety is a, is a shared commitment and a shared responsibility. Just a couple of announcements. Um, I would like to acknowledge what's happening with the conflict of Ukraine and Russia. To provide uh, critical needed uh, first aid supplies to those impacted, the Brooklyn DA's office is holding a humanitarian relief drive in collaboration with the NYPD's Russian American Officers Association. Supplies, first aid kits, and over-the-counter pain medications are in high demand. These items will be collected until March 31st, and I encourage you to give what you can. Um, kindly mail online purchases to the Kings County District Attorney's Office, humanitarian aid to Ukraine, 350 J Street, 19th floor. Or um, if you're in the neighborhood and you would like to drop it off to the Brooklyn DA's lobby, the same address. Um, also, I would like to encourage you to visit the Brooklyn DA's website just to learn more about our current uh, press releases and just to check out the great work that we do at the Brooklyn DA's office and visit our social media platforms. Um, if there's a, a public matter, a public safety matter, quality of life issue or concern you would like to address with our office, as always, I, um, I encourage you to call the Brooklyn DA's Action Center at 718-250-2340. And um, um, I would like to wish uh, board member Mr. Burke um, a happy retirement and good luck. Uh, and, and thank you so much for your service to the community and to community board 14. 
Um, and as, uh, and as always, I would like to thank community board 14 for everything that they do for the community as well. Thank you, Sean and uh, to board members. Uh, and finally, happy upcoming holidays. St. Patrick's day Purim. We have Easter coming up Ramadan. Uh, and that's really it. Thank you for allowing me to speak and I look forward to seeing you on March 24. I believe that Anastasia Yaskova from the mayor's office actually did post a note that she dropped off, but because I do see her phone listed here, I just wanted to give her one more opportunity to speak. Anastasia. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. Go Good ahead. evening all. I'm so sorry I had the uh, connection issues. Um, yes, good evening all. Good to see, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, I just wanted to add to um, Nancy's um, statement about um, assistance for um, Ukrainian um, people in here, and Mayor Adams and Mayor um, Office of Immigrant Affairs Commissioner Manuel Castro released a statement in response to President Biden's extending temporary protected status to one million Ukrainian immigrants living in the United States. Ukrainian New Yorkers can visit nyc.gov slash Ukrainian resources for more information or call the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs Immigration Legal Services hotline at 1-800-354-0365 for help in applying for temporary status, as well as for connection to city-funded free and safe immigration legal help. And um, also again, happy holidays, everyone and happy Women's Month, and good to be here. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anya, for uh, running the public session. Nina, I see your hand is up. Did you have an announcement? Yes, I just want to remind everybody about the um, Community Roundtable on March 30th at the Midwood Jewish Center, uh, starting at 10 a.m., and I hope that uh, people will join us. And just as an aside, this is the first time since 1984 that Purim and St. Patrick's Day have come out together. So, <laughs> Joanne, can I can I um, emphasize Nina's announcement because there are uh, a couple of nonprofit organizations with really valuable resources and programs and events coming up. If you have not already received an invitation to the nonprofit roundtable, please shoot us a quick email to the info at cb14brooklyn.com email address so we can make sure that you um, can gather with other community-based organizations um, based in and serving our uh, community. We will be joined by New York City Comptroller Brad Lander at this event who's working to facilitate uh, city contracts payments, which I think is good news for all CBOs. Um, and with that, oh, I think Pincus Hyken was acknowledged, but we appreciate all of his work um, supporting our work at the community board. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, before we adjourn, I just wanted to um, just say a few words of thanks. I wanted to thank uh, Anya Hoyer, of course, for all of her hard work every day and also acknowledge that we would not be meeting here via WebEx without her willingness to learn the platform and, um, and uh, facilitate these meetings. And I also wanna point out that she was really instrumental in securing um, or uh, in investigating uh, the Lerfrac Center at Prospect Park um, as our location for our annual youth conference. I think it's gonna be really super fantastic. Um, I really also want to thank Patricia Olinder for all of her hard work in the office and, you know, just all of the support and learning of uh, all of those really messy financial systems that that had to happen. Um, so thank you both. We don't get to say thank you to you enough, but we really appreciate you. Thank you. That being said, um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Seconded. Well, that was really fast. Okay. <laughs> so this meeting of Community Board 14 is adjourned at 8 o'clock on uh, March 14th. Thank you, very, everybody, so much for making it efficient. I appreciate you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Good night, everyone. everyone. Good night, 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 everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.